from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Larry Marcio. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is from Fran Colton from Atikokan, Ontario, and it's in loving memory of her husband, Richard, and her children, Michelle, Vernon, Vaughn, and Susan. The second is the Wilson family from Nottingham, England, in loving memory of Buddy Wilson, who passed away 19 years ago today, and for the intentions of the family. The third is an anonymous donor from Calgary, Alberta, in memory of his wife, Roselli, who died on March the 6th, 2012, and for their deceased family members. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Today we begin our Lenten journey on this Ash Wednesday. Let us prepare our hearts by calling to mind our sins and failings in life. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I've done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether the Lord will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering to be presented to the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even the infants at breast, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I know my 
my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Have mercy, O Lord, for we have sinned. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. harden your hearts, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise My dear friends in Christ, as you can see, our liturgical season has changed dramatically from yesterday. The great season of Lent has begun on this Ash Wednesday day, 2019. And during this season of repentance, we use the color violet or purple. The Gloria and the Alleluias are suppressed. Flowers are not found in our sanctuaries, and our music is a little more somber. In our first reading today, which was taken from the prophet Joel, we hear of repentance of the entire community to turn away from sin and to repent. The prophet makes it clear that the Lord God is calling us to return to him Return to me 
with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. You know, it is never too late for us to return to God and to receive his forgiveness and also his unlimited mercy. We just have to approach him. Lord, I am sorry. Take a moment and think about St. Luke's Gospel when Jesus was dying on the cross. And the good thief turns to Jesus and asks for forgiveness. And immediately Jesus responds by saying to the good thief, today you will be with me in paradise. My friends, as we enter the desert experience with Christ, during these 40 days, we may ask ourselves, are we hungry for God? And do we thirst for his holiness? We certainly know that God wants to set our hearts ablaze with the fire of the Holy Spirit, that we may share in, in, in his holiness and radiate the joy of the gospel to those around us, the good news. St. Augustine tells us that there are two kinds of people and two kinds of love. One is holy and the other is selfish. One is subject to God and the other endeavors to equal him. The end of the quote. And when we hear this quote from St. Augustine, perhaps we should remind ourselves we are what we love. God wants to free our hearts from all that would keep us captive to selfishness and to sin. Jesus in our gospel today makes it very clear when he's speaking to his disciples that we must pray, that we must fast, and that we must give alms. The Jewish people considered these as the three cardinal virtues of the religious life. They were seen as signs of someone living a good, pious life. Three great pillars to live out our lives. Jesus then goes on to ask his disciples, why do you pray? Why do you fast? Why do you give alms? In other words, why should you? Is it to draw attention to yourself or to others so others may notice you and think highly of you? Or is it to give glory to God? Jesus says true piety is something more than feeling good or looking holy. And we know the prophet Isaiah says it is a gift and working of the Holy Spirit. So what is the reward that Jesus is offering his disciples, which, of course, all of we are? The answer is quite simple. It is communion with God the Father, for in him alone we will find the fullness of life, the fullness of happiness, and the fullness of truth. Perhaps as we begin our Lenten journey, we might use this prayer from St. Augustine, which is recorded in his book of Confessions. The prayer goes like this. When I am completely united to you, there will be no more sorrows or trials. Entirely full of you, my life will be complete. Amen. Perhaps we can use that prayer during our Lenten journey. So we're also very much aware that number 40 is a very significant number in the Holy Scriptures. For instance, Moses went to the mountain to seek the face of God in prayer and fasting. The people of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 days in preparation for their entry into the Promised Land. Elijah fasted for 40 days as he journeyed in the wilderness 
to the mountain of God. Therefore, we are also called to journey with the Lord Jesus in this holy season of prayer, of fasting, almsgiving, and penance. Our completion of our Lenten journey, of course, takes us to the great tritium of Easter, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, and of course, Easter Day. Jesus gives us our spiritual food and grace to be pilgrims on this journey of faith. It will prepare us also for spiritual combat and avoiding the many temptations of our world. We know that we must also follow Jesus in the way of the cross. And this is in order to share in the victory of Christ's death and resurrection. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we begin our Lenten journey, let us ask the Lord Jesus for a fresh outpouring of his Holy Spirit so that we may grow each day in faith and hope and love, and especially that we may embrace his will more fully within our own lives. Our prayer for today. Lord Jesus, we ask that you give us a lively faith, a firm hope, a fervent charity, and a great love for you. Take away from us all lukewarmness in the meditation of your holy word and any dullness in our prayers. Give us fervor and joy in thinking always of you and especially your grace to fill us with compassion for others, especially those in need, that we may respond always with generosity. Amen. Our prayers of the faithful. As we begin our Lenten journey, we turn with confidence to God the Father, who knows our needs, and ask his help in preparing for a worthy celebration of Easter. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for all the bishops and leaders of the church, that they may be stirred to lead all people to generous service in their local communities. For this we pray to the Lord. For those who are experiencing temptation or overcome by the difficulties of life, may they be guided by Jesus and given the strength to persevere. For this we pray to the Lord. That this holy season of Lent may be a time of renewal and result in our approaching those things which have real and lasting value. For this we pray to the Lord. And we pray for the sick and the dying and all those who are faced with life's sorrow that God may fill any emptiness in their lives with his love. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for our deceased relatives and friends that they may share freely in the life of God. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, your son was tempted as we are. We ask that you support us in the time of temptation. Give us strength in our weakness and help us to do your will in all things. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And by the mystery of the water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who didn't humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased the sacrifice that we offer you with a humble and contrite heart. Wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Thank you, Joel. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
as we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount, fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us. We have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Your kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer peace to one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With the Almighty God bless you on this day, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. Turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. Amen. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Remember that all requests for prayers are included in our prayer intentions book and shared with all of our selves. You fought with Satan and you won your faithfulness and good. Give us your strength, your skill, your trust in God.